Fresno County uh, DA defends the $5 million salary for the Valley Children's Hospital CEO in, in consecutive years. In contrast, Fresno Council member Gary Bredefeld calls the pay exorbitant. A little bit of information about CEO pays of different hospitals in our area. That's the, the range is about $1.5 million to well, a little over $5 million. Gary, you got involved in this um, a few weeks ago. Uh, about I and mean, you had a debate with the, our district attorney, mm-hmm. and there was folks that say, "But well, wait a minute, Valley Children's is an incredible hospital. It does wonderful things to to attract a CEO to Valley Children's. Uh, you have to pay enough money, and five million dollars is commensurate with their budget, um, and we shouldn't be questioning." Uh, you know what the what the CEO makes. If you can, if the board could find another CEO that would have done that to save dollars, uh, what are what are your what is your response to that? And uh, assuming our uh, district attorney was here, or really for that matter, the CEO of Todd Santropak, who have met uh, on several occasions over the last ten years, if he was here, what would you say to them? This is a nonprofit hospital. Uh, it is uh, taking care of children that are on Medi-Cal. 75% of them are on Medi-Cal. 20% of Fresno County is impoverished. Uh, we all want the top-notch CEO. And let's just say, Darius, that Todd Suntrapak is all of that. He's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, $5 million is an excessive compensation package in 2020. Uh, he got a $5 million forgivable loan. Uh, We don't know the terms of that. We don't know if there's an interest rate on that. Nothing is there. Uh, He uh, apparently used the funds to purchase a home in Carmel for $6.5 million that has no lien on it. So uh, there's no loan on that. And also uh, there's uh, in the, in the filings, there's also deferred compensation that's alluded to of over $11 million in the same year given to him and millions of dollars given to his subordinates, other uh, executives. So in essence, uh, it looks like he got a a $21 million package in 2020. I don't know what the terms of the deferred comp is, how it's structured, but it's just listed as deferred comp of over 11 million for him. And uh, he has five executives underneath him that also make over a million dollars, his second in Second in command makes over $3 million, according to the court filings. There's 27, uh, 28 executives, including Todd Sutrapak, that make $27 million overall. That's double, that's double almost any other children's hospital looking in the country across executive pay. Why does a city council member from the city of Fresno, representing Northeast Fresno, care about now, I get it. Valley Children's has a big influence as, as, as a valley-wide, Valley Children's Hospital. But, I mean, by the way, a similar question is asked of me. Why do, am I getting involved in K-12 through public education? But I'm going to ask you this question. Why does, again, a city sitting city council member representing Northeast Fresno care about what a CEO pay should be at Valley Children's Hospital? How many kids out of that $21 million package didn't get an x-ray, didn't get chemotherapy, how many doctors could they have hired, how many nurses could they have hired, how many, uh, how much pay could they have increased to keep people at Valley Children's? That's the question. And why is the Fresno City Council, I represent these people, these, these families and children that are going to Valley Children's Hospital, just like I did 34 years ago uh, with my child. So uh, the reality is um, I care. And uh, I'm not going to turn uh, away, not look at what is in front of me. And when I became aware of this, because people sent me this information, uh, I'm going to speak out on it. And uh, just as I've done with many other things in our community, whether it was, you know, Fresno County hiding a Chinese lab in Reedley for eight months or children, uh, county kids sleeping on the floor uh, in the county or stuff at City Hall that's gone on, you know, that I've talked about with 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 misuse of credit cards or things of that sort. Uh, I'm a guy who speaks out on things. Now, it doesn't come without a price. Uh, When you speak out on this and you represent people, uh, you are uh, upsetting very uh, wealthy people. And I understand, I've heard 
rumors that uh, you know very wealthy people who are affiliated with Valley Children's are, are looking to come after me in this race. And you know, all I would say to them is bring it on. What's going on with contractor pay at um, Fresno Unified? Or what, is it Fresno Unified? Let's just kind of clarify that. And if there's a particular school, let's discuss that as well. And then tell us uh, what, the, what the allegations are. It's actually a statewide problem. Um, but yes, there, we do have a case at Slater Elementary of 22 workers that were not paid. They were carpenters. They were non-represented, non-union carpenters who uh, basically most from some of them were around three weeks. Some of them were around two months were, were paid at all. We've been fighting for their trying to get them paid since 2018. Um, it was Slater Elementary. Um, it, it's an ongoing problem, Darius. That's in our, it's in our world. It's in our that's that's kind of the forgotten crime because of it's a construction worker. It's construction workers' problems. Uh, they have the state has really failed to police the industry, where it's in, it's basically in incentivizing uh, scrupulous contractors to go ahead and just be their business model to to cheat the system. And unfortunately, it's really, really costing taxpayers a lot of money. When I started really listening to the non-union contractors and they started voicing their opinions to me and saying, Dave, we face the same problem, a guy that's cheating the system. And there's some really good union and non-union contractors that fly a straight ship and they can't compete. They can't compete against this because it's like, it's statistically, it's a 30% advantage. And nobody would join a race if you had a 30% advantage over somebody. So we, we've been fighting really hard to try to get this police help, help all the public entities. I know the city of Fresno just adopted the wage <coughs> death ordinance, which is a great step. And I know uh, council member Bredefield supported that. And we really appreciate that because he recognizes that honest contractors are facing these problems. You know, we're contractors and sometimes a general contractor doesn't know that their subcontra subcontractor is not paying their staff. So my question to you is that, was this ever elevated to the general contractor? Yes, uh, it was. Who was it? Okay, who was the GC on, on this? So on, this? The, on, on the Slater Elementary, the GC was Davis Moreno Construction. Um, they were informed from day one when, when we felt like it was just going too far, where we had the workers, it was right around Christmas time. We had to do something. We, we marched 22 workers into Fresno Unified's office. And the head of construction at the time called Davis Murrow immediately and said, hey, you need to make this right. And we, at the same time, filed with the state for them to get paid. And so that kind of removes us from the situation because now it's with the state. So we, we, all we could do is encourage to follow through for the workers. Um, but, yes, they, they were all, all at the beginning were made. Every party, if you see the civil wage and assessment penalty, the uh, paperwork from the, the state, it names everybody was informed from day one. Including, was, including Fresno Unified. But you say including Fresno Unified, were the superintendent in, uh, notified? Do you know? I, I don't know that. I don't know about the trustees or the superintendent. I do know the procurement and the construction division were. They were very much for because that's that's their checks and balances for issuing the bonds for the payment bonds, your surety bonds, all the bonds that they have to. They are in charge of that. And somewhere inside this process were prevailing wage rulers. There's nothing but checks and balances. It's a red tape nightmare is prevailing wage. And that's to protect workers. Somehow in there, the workers were failed. They were failed. Uh, the checks and balances for the, uh, I'm pretty sure it was the assurity bond that makes, that bond is specific to make sure that workers get paid. Somehow wasn't withheld for the workers of the 22 workers, almost three quarters of a million dollars. As David mentioned, I mean, you know, the city council <clears throat> addressed this. It was a unanimous vote. Uh, we can't have this kind of theft going on. As David uh, mentioned, it impacts uh, obviously revenue streams, but it hurts the worker. And the bottom line is it hurts a worker. I and mean, none of us would want any of our wages uh, being taken in any, uh, um, you know, surreptitious way and certainly illegal way. We want the money that we earn. So that's why the city council supported it. Tyler Maxwell led the effort on it, which I appreciate. And uh, I appreciate uh, all efforts in making sure workers are treated fairly. Journalist Edward uh, Smith reached out to a Superintendent Nelson today uh, with um, about comments and feedback, and he did not hear back. I think he's going to be calling the trustees tomorrow to see um, 
who was aware of this and what actions they took. They may have worked behind the scenes, for all we know, to try to address this. Um, but we'll we'll see we'll see where this thing goes. Um, I'm I'm really disappointed that Davis Moreno is a pretty reputable contractor. No, that, I mean they do. You said two hundred million dollars worth of work. Is that what you said for yeah, the district? Since, yeah, about two hundred. Yeah, about two hundred twelve million is I think where it's right about. That's, I mean that's a lot of work that they must know what they're doing, and and I'm sure they're going to get to the bottom of this and get this thing addressed. And um, the trustees that were made, uh, trustee or trustees that were made aware of it. Hopefully they'll uh, work with the construction team and, and and the contractor to get this issue addressed and resolved. And those are non-union workers that happen to work for uh, the contractor, the subcontractor. But you guys are trying to help all the workers. Is that correct? Is that what yeah, your involvement yes. in this? Yeah. Yeah. For the carpenters union, we help all workers because it helps the industry in general. Like I, yeah, we we help non-union workers. We are union workers. It's in the benefit for the our contractors to help make sure that every, it just helps and elevate the industry in general. Let's see if we can get Mr. Marino on the show next week uh, to address this. Hopefully, he's got a plan to get this thing addressed because nobody wants this. Hey, again, we're contractors. We have subcontractors, and and if um, and we're non-union shop. If uh, if somebody doesn't pay a subcontractor, I mean. Sometimes people don't pay. Con sub this happens, you know, once a year, sometimes once every other year. Contract subcontractor doesn't pay their bill to a vendor, and then we get liened because there's a you know pre-lien filed. So we're very familiar with that. This happens maybe once every other year, uh, and occasionally we pay the subcontractor, and now we got to double dip, double pay. We pay the subcontractor once. Now we got to go write a check to the. Uh, supplier that didn't get paid that has a lien on our on our on our project. So I understand how that works. I'm I'm hoping that uh, Davis Marino uh, steps up and gets involved and, and addresses this issue. Uh, wage theft is 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 a problem. 